Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be explaining you about a scheduling algorithm. The name of the scheduling algorithm is FCFS, first come, first serve. This one is the simplest among all the scheduling algorithms. And also, let's, let me just try to tell you right from the, the previous two sessions, I am telling about the scheduling can be preemptive and non preemptive. So, if it is preemptive, which are the scheduling algorithms that comes under this category? If it is non preemptive, then which are the algorithm that comes under this category? So, under these, each of these categories, you have different algorithms. FCFS is non preemptive. Okay. And in future sessions, you will be learning about the different algorithms. Like after FCFS in non preemptive, you have the shortest job first. Then after that, you have shortest remaining time next. And in preemptive, you have the round robin scheduling. Then you have the priority scheduling in preemptive. So, priority scheduling once again is of both types. One is the preemptive scheduling priority, uh, pre preemptive priority scheduling and non-preemptive priority scheduling. So, these things we will be seeing in later sessions. In today's session, you will come to know about the first algorithm that is first scheduling algorithm and that is called as first come first serve. So, now you are you know very well scheduling scheduling a process. So, which algorithm is used in order to schedule the process? What logic is used here whenever a scheduler picks a process from the ready queue and assigns that process to the CPU? Because you know that in the main memory in the ready queue you have a number of processes. First few things you have to know about this algorithm is a process which yeah this is the logic definitely a process which arrives first in the ready queue is firstly assigned to CPU. This is the main what the functionality of this particular scheduling a process that enters first in the ready queue in the main memory whichever process enters first will get what the chance to get the CPU assigned and it will complete its job. In case of a type pro process with smaller ID is executed first. Suppose assume that two processes have arrived at the same time in the ready state in the ready queue, then a process with a smaller ID. If smaller ID in a sense here, if P1 and P2 have arrived at the same time, like uh, then P1 will be what? P1 will be assigned to CPU to complete its job, smaller ID. It is non-preemptive in nature. Non-preemptive, many times I have been telling, process once assigned to the CPU, the process will complete its job and then the processor is deallocated from the process. So, we said that type of functionality as non preemptive. This it has got one disadvantage, it is it suffers from Conway effect. So, this I will be telling at the end of the session. Now, look here, let us begin the problem. The problem normally it will be asked in this manner and it is asked for 6 to 7 marks. So, a, consider a set of 5 processes and their arrival time and burst time in milliseconds is given. So, in the problem statement, it is asked to find out average turnaround time, average waiting time and average response time. So, if this is the question, then you are going to start like this. First, try to use a particular chart and the name of the chart is called as the Gantt chart. G A N double T. So, Gantt chart is basically a bar chart. It is used in organizations to show the scheduling of or the schedule of different activities that are carried out in the organization at what time a particular activity starts and at what time a particular activity ends. So, that type of chart is used here in order to what to make this scheduling algorithm the to show or to illustrate the uh, working of this algorithm. Now, let us start this chart with what the very first is what zeroth time. At 0, which process has arrived? P1 has arrived. And P1 has taken how much of time? 4 units. So, it will complete its job at 4. Very simple. You have done. Process which arrives first will be assigned with CPU. The CPU is allotted and now the process P1 has completed. Next process P2 has come at arrival time 1 only. But P2 is definitely what will get the chance only after P1 complete its job. So, P2 will come P2 has got how much of burst time? 3. So, 4 plus 3 is 7. P2 will complete its job at this time. Then you have what P3? P3 
has got how much of burst time it needs only one unit of time so it will complete its job at this point a b4 is having how much 2 so p4 will complete its job at 10 p5 is the next process p5 will complete its job at what 10 plus 5 15 so this way this is the simplest of all the algorithms it takes very less time to compute the different times here in this algorithm so you have started and moreover what is that you have seen that when a process 4 when a process p1 complete its 4 already all the processes are there in the queue your job is only what to pick one one process one after the other which has arrived first and place it here and show the completion time so this is how you have done now in order to com compute uh, this turnaround time you have to what you have to calculate the completion time completion time you will get easily from where from the chart so you can see p1 has completed at what time 4 this okay p2 has completed at 7 p3 at 8 p4 at 10 and p5 at 15 with after this immediately whatever is asked in the problem statement i have asked you to calculate the average turnaround time so turnaround time remember this diagram it is easy for if you are not remembering the times also i thought this diagram will help you always see like this arrival time completion time total time is what to, total uh, sorry turnaround time is the completion time minus arrival time so completion time is here i'll write in short ct here bt total term and this is the arrival time at look here you have to subtract these two turnaround time is nothing but completion time minus of arrival time 4 minus 0 4 7 minus 1 6 8 minus 2 6 10 minus 3 7 15 minus 4 11 okay this is how you have to write down the turnaround time then comes what the waiting time now waiting time also you you can easily see remember the time this waiting this is the duration here once again waiting time is the duration so how will you calculate the total time a process spends in the system minus of what the time it has taken to complete its job so that completing uh, the time it has taken to execute its task is what with the cpu that cpu time is what burst time so you have to take this turnaround time minus burst time will give you what see this is the total time then turn uh, waiting time will be what this total time minus of burst time this time minus this will give you what the waiting time very simple so write down here the waiting time is given turnaround time minus of burst time so both are available here you can easily carry out 4 minus 4 0 6 minus 3 3 6 minus 1 5 and 7 minus 2 5 11 minus 5 how much the response time also you can write down the time at which the process gets the cpu for the first time so that is response time now P, p1 got immediately at what immediately as soon as it arrived it got hold of cpu so the response is immediate here so it the response time is zero p2 got at what time this uh, see one more thing you can see here is process p1 arrived uh, got the uh, hold of cpu at this particular time zero the time it has arrived at zero so zero minus zero your response time is zero now p2 got hold of cpu at this point it has arrived at what time one so 4 minus 1 will give you 3 here p3 got its job started at 7 so 7 but it has arrived at 2 7 minus 2 5 then p4 got the cpu at 8 and it has arrived at 3 8 minus 3 5 then p5 got the cpu at 10 it has arrived at 4 10 minus 4 is 6 so this way you have to write down the values for the response just one observation here you can see the response time values are same like waiting times only so this will happen wherever the scheduling algorithm is non preemptive in nature non preemptive once you assign the cpu it will complete its job and then the cpu is deallocated de once assigned you complete the job and you leave it it is same like at the billing counter when the person comes at to bill that particular items the complete billing for that person is done then only the next person will come there to start its billing so partially it is not done there 
so that is called as non preemptive in nature so that's why you can see here the response time and the waiting time in case of non preemptive will always be same so once you are done with writing all the different times now simply add up these values 11 plus 7 18 18 plus 6 19 20 24 plus 6 30 plus 4 34 you got how much 34 i'll just write like this that this one is how much 16 plus 3 19 you got here and here also you got 19 now what is that you are supposed to find out in the question it was asked average turnaround time so average turnaround time is 34 by divided by what how many number of processes are here 5 so how much you will get 34 by 5 uh, 6.8 millisecond then average waiting time 19 divided by 5 so it is how much 3.8 millisecond so as you know that response time is same like the waiting time so this will also be how much 19 divided by 5 3.8 milliseconds so this is how you have to calculate very simple the first algorithm first come first serve now one more thing you have to remember here is before you like because there are different algorithms better to have uh, this particular thing written always uh, even during revision it may be uh, like helpful for you you write here criteria for this algorithm is arrival time okay and the mode of operation is what non preemptive these two points you have to remember which are those the criteria is what on what criteria are you scheduling you are taking arrival time as the criteria in order to schedule the processes and the mode of operation is non preemptive once assigned let the process complete the job then only it will exit so this is what is all about but one disadvantage is what it suffers from conway effect conway effect is if processes with more burst time arrives first then the processes with what smaller burst time have to wait for more time in order to get their turn so that is that effect is called as the conway effect so it is simply like at the billing counter if a person has got more items to get the billing done some 100 items he has put in the trolley then but the next person who is there behind him is having just one or two items to get the bill done but still that person has to wait until this first person complete its billing so that type of effect is called what here in the operating system in this scheduling it is called as the conway effect so hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take